So, and I, again, I'm just speaking for, you know, sometimes my context, you know, uh, you know, Christian Seventh-day Adventist. And sometimes we become so caught up on what makes us unique that it's gotten to the point where we're almost extinct, right? Like, we're so unique that we're gonna make ourselves extinct. So what that means is, here we are, what sets us apart, you know, you say Seventh Day, Sabbath, Adventist, Second Coming of Christ, so we're real big on prophecy. So we focus so much on Christ's Second Coming, and, and hear me when I say this, that we did not know what to do if he did not come in a certain amount of time. So we literally put a structure in place that was like, yo, we're not gonna be here long. Well, guess what? We're still here. And so because we spent so much focus on these other things, which are important, we've lost sight on the other things that Christ asked for us to do. Meeting in small groups, Acts chapter two and three. Having all things in common, sharing with believers, uh, pouring into your community, making people's lives better, Matthew 25, separate sheeps and goats, intimacy with Christ, Matthew 25, uh, you know, parable of the five, you know, the five foolish virgins, um, you know, John, uh, you know, Lord's prayer in, in, in John, in the book of John, I say the, uh, the book of John because the Lord's prayer is not Matthew uh, six. That's the prayer that Jesus used to teach them how to pray. Uh, you know, John is where Jesus prays a prayer. John 17 over his disciples, father, I pray that they may be one as we are one, uh, that they may know you, which is eternal life. Um, like we skipped over all that and those are essentials in the Bible and that has actually affected our ability to really establish a solid church because our church has been so big on these other items that we've left these other ones. And those are the ones that I unfortunately had to come across in my own study, seeing other people do. And I'm like, wait a second, hold up. Sabbath school, that's cool. The church is study, but that's not small groups. That's not doing life together. That's not connectivity. That's people coming in a classroom setting. That's not sitting in a circle and, and discussing my issues and my problems that I have in life. That's what they did in Acts 2 and 3, and then the church grew. We need to start doing that. So then when you take that biblical model, and now you have to fight, quote unquote, against the model of just a Sabbath school class, there's pushback to that. But then again, now a pandemic happens, Sabbath school model, boom, is completely gone, but people want to be connected. Well, wait a second, you haven't been doing small groups. And that's what a lot of people are into now. So all this stuff has been there. We just have emphasized the other stuff and just forgotten about these other key things that are in scripture that God, the early church taught us that we really need to get back to. Typically, there's a specific measurement for a pastor that you have for success. What's your attendance like? And uh, you know, some people might use giving, how many people are you baptizing? So this pandemic you know, really hits and I think it exposes like, okay, how do you really view success? You're gonna look, now are you gonna look at how many people join you online? Are you gonna look at, does your giving you know, continue to stay up? And, and so the, the way I've had to measure this can't be necessarily numbers based. I know numbers are so quantitative and it's hard facts, but what I'm trying to figure out how to measure success in this moment to see how I'm doing is to see how are people feeling connected to one another and connected to God and the peace of mind that they're getting from watching what we're doing, participating in what we're doing and sharing what we're doing with others. So for example, if, if I know that these people who came from the drive-by that they're, and I know it's hard cause you can't, how do you quantitate that? Like, how do you measure that? But if people are like, man, I couldn't get peanut butter at the grocery store, but man, I went to Mount Rubido and I got some like, yo, that's success. Um, if somebody was like, man, I was really nervous and worried about what was gonna happen, but I just finished listening to one of the Ruby talks and man, it brought me peace. And now I, I, I can face this week better. Those are things you can't measure, but to me, that's what success would be. And so all I can do like really during this time is to create the opportunities for people to receive love, grow and serve, for people to receive uh, relevant conversations that will give them hope and encouragement to create a platform for people to connect through groups, even if it's on Zoom, and to create a platform where we can continue to serve and minister our, to our community in a very specific and unique way based on this time. And if I can't get numbers for that, and I don't find out about that till I get to the other side, it's all good. Because at the end of the day, 
it's about kingdom growth and not just simply Mount Rubidoux growth. So that's what we're after. That's what we're after. Kingdom growth. That, that's my thing. Yeah.